Good morning students. Today I am going to talk about a hormone of the posterior pituitary gland called antidiuretic hormone. This is my handwritten notes. You can write this answer in an exam for 10 marks or 5 marks. Let's start. ADH is also called as arginine vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone. It is secreted by a part of the brain called the neurohypophysis. It is composed of glial like cells called pituitocytes. Now these cells, they do not secrete the hormone, they act as supporting structures for large number of terminal nerve fibers and terminal nerve endings from nerve tracts that originate in two places, supraoptic nuclei and paraventricular nuclei in hypothalamus. These tracts, they pass through pituitary stalk, which is also called as the hypophysial stalk, to the posterior pituitary. What are nerve endings? Nerve endings are bulbous knobs that contain secretory granules which secrete the hormone ADH. You can draw this diagram in the exam. It's a flow chart. Let's consider this side because we are doing only ADH. <coughs> this is oxytocin. Supraoptic nuclei secrete the hormone. The hormone combines with neurophysins. It reaches the posterior pituitary. Secretory granules secrete it via exocytosis. And ultimately, ADH separates from neurophysis. ADH. So, when you write an answer, you should always remember that an answer has a pre forma or a structure. I call it the succinct. So, my students in CMP know I call it the succinct. S U C C I N T. So, the first here is structure, synthesis, storage, secretion, transport, other sources, metabolism, receptors, actions, regulation. Factors affecting and ultimately applied physiology. Let's start with the structure. So the hormone is actually a polypeptide containing nine amino acids. So for vasopressin, you can write down this. The synthesis is already done on the first page. You draw that, you drew that flow chart and the diagram. So that you can draw in synthesis. It is synthesized in magnocellular neurons. They are formed in rough endoplasmic reticulum. So ADH, like any other hormone, also has a pro-hormone. The name of the pro-hormone is pre pro -preso -pysin. Now, where is this hormone stored? It is stored in the axon's nerve endings. They contain secretory granules, which you saw in the body, in the diagram called herring bodies. Secretion. Nerve impulses from the cell body come to the hypothalamus. From the hypothalamus, there is depolarization of the neurosecretory vesicles and ultimately secretion of the hormone. What are they? They are special vesicles having a high water permeable pore. So, ADH acts on cell. It combines with the membrane receptor. CAMP, which is the second messenger, is formed. Because of that, there is phosphorylation of elements in the special vesicles. The vesicles insert in the apical cell membrane. This increases areas of high water permeability. This entire process occurs in 5 to 10 minutes. Now, let us see the actions of ADH on various organs. The headings are kidney, VC effect, that is the vasoconstrictor effect, effect on anterior effect on liver effect on brain. On the kidney, it decreases the excretion of water. In VC effect, it increases the blood pressure. The stimulus for this is hemorrhage. In anterior it combines with V1 B receptors and increases ACTH secretion. In liver, it combines with V1 A receptor and increases glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis. In brain, it acts as a neurotransmitter, helps in memory, temperature regulation, blood pressure regulation, regulation of the circadian rhythm, and in brain development. The regulation is of two types. You have regulation osmotic and change in blood volume. Now let's see osmotic. What is the stimulant for osmotic? You have changes in plasma osmolality, not osmolarity. It is L I T Y. So, water deprivation causes increase in plasma 
osmolality. With water is less, the minerals increase. That is why increase in plasma osmolality. What happens? The osmoreceptors. What are osmoreceptors? They are a group of neurons in hypothalamus in the region of circumventricular organs and organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis. So a rise in plasma osmolality, this is the normal value, it causes shrinkage of the osmoreceptor, that means they become smaller. This increases discharge of osmoreceptor rate. This causes increased release of neurotransmitter. They act on the baganian or cellular cells. ADH is released. ADH as per its action increases the permeability of the collecting ducts, a part of the nephron in kidney for H2O reabsorption. This increases, I'm sorry, this decreases the urinary output. Regulation part 2, changes in blood volume. What is the mechanism of action here? There are three. Pressure receptor mechanism, you have the renin angiotensin and ANP, atrial nitriuretic peptide. So we start with the pressure receptors. So you have low pressure receptors, you have high pressure and then you have 9th and 10th. Cranial nerves. Low pressures monitor fullness of vascular system, thus responding to volume changes, volume receptors. High pressure respond to pressure changes, baroreceptors. Next, ANP. ADH increase causes ANP release by myocytes. The hypothalamus then inhibits ADH. This is a kind of negative feedback. What are the factors affecting? Stress of pain, chronic emotional stress, surgery, all these increase ADH. Adrenaline, decrease ADH. Alcohol, decrease ADH. Due to diuresis. You know what is diuresis, right? Age, elderly, all increase ADH. Cortisol, thyroid, all increase ADH. Now let's see the applied physiology. Write this down. Self-based learning for the people who don't know. It means it's for your homework. 